Good evening. Welcome to the telecast. My name is Kathy Ellis, and the name of this ministry is God's Power Surge, GPS for short, because I believe everyone needs direction and where they're going, and Jesus Christ is the only direction. And uh, we're still in the Christmas season, and I'm going to try to sing you some Christmas songs this evening. Um, But I want to talk about, we're in part two of honor, talking about honor and what it means uh, to give honor and why we should give honor. Hallelujah. We'll start out by singing this, and it's in the tune of How Great Thou Art, and it's called When Christ Was Born. When Christ was born in Bethlehem's lowly manger, when the angel hosts brought tidings from on high, the shepherds gazed in
a king is born. You know, he came into this world a babe. And he became the lamb for our salvation, for our sacrifice. But he's coming back, a reigning king. A king was born that night. Hallelujah. Over 2,000 years ago, a king was born. Hallelujah. We'll try this song. <laughs> Sweet baby Jesus. Sweet baby Jesus, born in a stable, there with his mother and father alone in fields there were. of his birth. God's gift, free gift. You know, some people say, well, if it's free, it must not be worth much. But let me tell you something. Your salvation is worth everything. It's worth it all, folks. Your salvation is worth eternity. It's worth everything. I can't, I can't Stress that enough, what your salvation is worth. What your salvation is worth. God is so good. And he loves us so much that he wants us to be in heaven with him. He wants us to be there. And I had a song, and I can't find it. So I'm not used to this book. <laughs> But I think I found it. As long as I can remember how it goes. Sometimes I go blank on things. Mary and Joseph were trapped.
stall in the stable was empty close by and Joseph took Mary and they went inside and their baby Jesus was born Christmas Day laid in a manger to sleep on the hay Christmas means Jesus sweet Jesus to me born King of Israel our Savior is he died for salvation that we could go Jesus, sweet Jesus to me. Shepherds were watching their sheep in the field when a heavenly star shone around them so real. The angel said, Fear not, I give thee great joy. The world has a Savior, it's a sweet Though their journey was far, they gave gifts of honor and worshiped his name. For they found the promise, he's the king of all kings. Christmas means Jesus, sweet Jesus to me. Born king of Israel, our savior. that we could go free Christmas means Jesus sweet Jesus to me Christmas means Jesus sweet Jesus to me and that's what G Christmas is all about Jesus Christ Mass it was Christ's Mass, and they call it Christmas. And we have made it so difficult this time of year. You know, some people are losing their jobs. And there's not a lot of money to buy a lot of expensive gifts. And that shouldn't be what it's about. Just gather at the house and have a good meal and praise God for health, life, and what you do have. What you do have be content with what you have and give God glory and you'll see your circumstance change because when you honor God oh things start to happen things change now let us go to the word you know this is our second part of the series on honor and what it is to to show honor and to give honor unto God and what happens when we give God honor you know, because even in the church, we don't give each other honor and grace. You know, and I've talked about that in the past on how we treat one another. And if we show honor, because, you know, there's still prophets around us. There's still people who, who give word from God. But are we listening? Are we giving the prophets honor? And we need to consider that. Are we giving our pastors honor? You know, are we giving God honor? That's the main one, because if you're able to give God honor and love God and, and, and be holy for he is holy, then everything else will fall into place. Because honor is something that is recognized or bestowed by a community. And we talked about bestow being to give, to do, to put or to place or to deposit, to give something, you know, given by the community. It's honor. Uh, showing esteem for one deserving of respect, attention, or obedience. And we talked about our parents and honoring our parents. And that meant that we would have a long life. God would give us a long life if we honored our parents. Now, a lot of people grew up in a home where it would be very difficult for them to honor their parent. But let me tell you, honor is for you. You doing your part to show respect to them whether they deserve it or not. And that's how we are in a church body. 
You know, we are to show respect to people, even into the world. When we go out to the store, some people are rude to us. You know, we just smile and, and show them grace and love and say, God bless you. May I pray with you? You know, just go by the leading of the Spirit. Sometimes people are just in such a shape and in such despair that they lash out at other people, a lot of times not meaning to or even recognizing that they are. And then you have those that are just some plain mean, but that's beside the point. We, as Christians, need to be showing honor. And first and foremost, we need to be showing God honor. Hallelujah. Now we're going to be in Psalms 1, starting out. Psalms 1 1 through 6, and it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. And his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly not so, but like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And that should make you shudder. If you're not living a life of honor for God, then you're not living for God. Going to church and sitting in a pew on Sunday doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in the garage makes you a car. Okay? It's a lifestyle. It's making up your mind and believing upon whom you serve. And what I mean by serving is you do to other people. You work for other people. God has you doing a work. When you're serving God, it's a lifestyle, and He has you working. He has you doing things. Because that's what God does. He's a worker. He's a mover and a shaker. He's not boring. Not at all. It's hard to tell what He'd have you doing. I didn't think I'd ever be on a telecast talking to you. But here I've been for the last two or three years I've been on here, working up to my 200th episode. Wow. Ha, that blows my... That's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Just blows me away. Just thinking about all the things that God has me doing. Getting ready to go to Africa again. First of January. So keep our mission trip in prayer. But when you honor God and you live for God, you get to do things. He has you doing a work kingdom work and it's a joy hallelujah whether it's visiting a neighbor sending cards to people calling people that are shut-ins I mean there's all sorts of things people can do cleaning the church decorating the church there's no great or small work in the kingdom of God and once he knows that he can trust you with the little, he'll keep adding to you. He'll surprise you. Hallelujah. Then we go to 1 Peter, second chapter, 17 through 19. says, Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only to be good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. So he's saying here we're to honor all men. Even if um, we may not always get it in return. If a man for conscience towards God endure grief, Suffering wrongfully. You know, we have to be thankful, you know, for all things. And um, sometimes it's not easy being a Christ follower. And it's going to get worse, folks, before it gets better. Persecution's coming. You know, and we got to be able to stand with that whole armor of God on. You know, the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness. 
You know, our loins girt with the, with the truth, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, our shield of faith, and our sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We have to know these things, and it's for us to stand. Stand and be protected against the wiles of the devil. That's what Ephesians 6 says, because we don't fight against flesh and blood. You know, the devil will use the people closest to you to get under your nerves, on your nerves, around your nerves. But you have to recognize it's a spiritual warfare. It's not that person. You know, and there's been times where I've rebuked people to their face and just turn around and walk off just like nothing. So you know it's the enemy right then. You know it's the enemy. So I rebuke you, devil. Just turn around and walk off. We've got that power of rebuke in us. To, for our protection, to protect our joy, to protect our heart. Hallelujah. And we need to use that. God will honor us if we stay close to Him and honor Him. And you know, we're not always going to get that in return. But we have to be able to give it. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which we talked about last week, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be with thee, thou mayest live long on the earth, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and abomination of admonishing, ad, yeah, of the Lord. <laughs> Admonition of the Lord. You know, bring them up, Nurturing and knowing God. Knowing God's nature. And, um, you know, we're failing with that. And we need to get back to the basics of things. Teaching our children. Taking them to church. Yes, take your children to church. Take your grandchildren to church. Teach them the ways of God. Because if not, the world's going to teach them all other things and they'll be lost. And we don't want that. Because God is coming soon. We see the condition of this world, and it's going to... Things are changing rapidly. Rapidly, things are changing. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready. We need to ready ourselves for His coming. And we need to tell other people, ready yourself for Christ is coming. Get in church. If you don't have a church, then um, come to Green Valley outside of Bridgeport. Blue Ridge Drive, Bridgeport. Put it in your GPS and come and visit us some Sunday or Saturday evening. I mean, you know, it, it's important that we all get together. And um, it's important for your salvation and eternal life that you get in church and start honoring God. Because there's a reason there's a reason that we honor God and get to know Him and show Him respect. Because He's our Father. And if we're planning on spending eternity in heaven, we got to know and spend time with Him down here. Right? I mean, you're, someone's not go, you're not going to let someone move into your house that you don't know for an eternity. No, you're going to want to know who they are before they come in. And that's the way God is. He's got a kingdom. And He wants you to live a lifestyle that is pleasing to Him. He's got rules, people. And people don't want to hear about rules, but God has rules. He's always had rules. And they were for our benefit, to keep us out of sin's harmful ways. Because sin is harmful to us. It'll kill us. It says the wages of sin is death. That's why, <laughs> that is why we need... God, to deliver us for an eternity, an eternity with Him. Uh, you know, our, this is an eternal thing. It's not just here and now. Because after death, where are you going to be? When you die, where are you going to be? And you need to ask yourself that. And then ask God, am I living the way I need to, God? God? And is heaven my home? If not, then change the things within me to get me ready. And he surely will. 
Hallelujah. Second Timothy 2.21 says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. And that's how we need to be. We need to ask God to purge us so we can be a vessel of honor for usury, for his kingdom, for his kingdom, prepared unto every good work, prepared. That's how we need to be, prepared for our eternity. And our preparation comes with our relationship with God. Hallelujah. Hebrews 5, 4, And no man taketh his honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. You don't call honor unto yourself. No man taketh his honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Aaron was called of God to help Moses. Hallelujah. And be part of the priesthood to get the priests um, ready when they started on their journey. He was called of God. No man taketh this honor unto himself. But he that is called of God. God will give you honor if you honor God. And he'll give you a calling. Gifts and callings are without repentance. Hallelujah. And God knows you better than you know yourself. I didn't think that I would be able to do any of this that I'm doing. But praise God. He's awesome. Hallelujah. Then we go to Mark 6, 1 through 6. And it's, this talks about what happens when you don't have honor. Because if you recall, when we started this series, I said, who is God sending you that you're not honoring? And without honor, God cannot move. So listen to this, Mark 6, 1 through 6. And he went out thence and came into his own country and his disciples followed him. And he's talking about Jesus. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? And are these not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he, he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. Prophet is without honor unless. <laughs> ah, is not without honor, but in his own country, among his own kin, and in his own house. See, they knew Jesus as a child growing up. They just knew him as Jesus. They didn't consider him to be anything more. And when he started teaching and preaching with such authority and doing all these works, they thought, well, who's he? You know, it's just Jesus. And do we not do that to our brothers and sisters when God comes on them and they come up to you and they start giving you a word? And you're like, who's he? You know, God will use the people you least expect him to. I think sometimes just to test you, see if you're going to listen or heed to whatever the prophet tells you. And as we've seen here, they didn't honor Jesus. They just said, well, who's he? So we have to consider, who's God sending our way? Or is he sending you? And we have to honor 
our pastors and our prophets and our teachers and evangelists, that fivefold ministry. We got to honor those people. We got to lift them up and we got to edify the body. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the reading of your word. Let it teach us, guide us, and direct us in how to honor you more, to come into the gates with thanksgiving and give you honor, glory, and praise, and get into the throne room. And then let our supplications be known unto you. Lord, sometimes we get in a hurry in our prayer life, and forgive us, Lord God. Let us always honor you with who we are, our lifestyle, and of our service unto you, Lord God. Let us give you honor, glory, and praise, for it is worthy unto you, Lord, to have all these things from us. Lord, teach us, and give us unto us people who will teach us and guide us and give us strength and direction. And help us, Lord God, in all these days that's coming before us, Lord God. Strengthen your body. Let your body, Lord God, rise up in joy and be strengthened. In Jesus' name we ask. And I am out of time. But until next time, I hope you are blessed.